Antoinette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. Today I'm sewing Cosmos and for me that makes it feel like summer is just around the corner. I sew my Cosmos at the beginning of April here in the UK and the main reason I do this is because I don't want to sew it too early because then I find it really hard to keep it under cover and protect it from the frost because the Cosmos grows really quickly and it gets quite tall and if you sew your Cosmos a bit later which is very tempting what happens is your Cosmos will start flowering once it gets warm and so you will have cosmos flowering on much shorter plants and your plants won't have time to grow and produce all that lovely foliage you know all the fluffy greenery and longer stems so if you sow at the beginning of april here in the uk which is similar to a zone eight um, then you'll get a really good sized plant before it starts flowering and you'll get loads of flowers so I'm just going to go through how I sew my Cosmos, which is really straightforward, and then I'll show you which varieties I'm sewing. Um, so I sew into these 40 cell trays, the same as I've been using in many of my other videos. And again, I'm using the Peat Free Compost, which is the Melcourt Silver Grow Peat Free Compost, which is endorsed by the RHS. Um, it's a really nice texture. Um, it's fine enough to be able to sew your seeds in and I find that my seeds grow really well in it. Um, it does have goodness in it and many people like to use um, seed compost because it doesn't have any goodness in it but I find it dries out too fast and I'm just really happy with this one. Um, the cosmos will need bumping up quite quickly probably. You'd be tempted to sow into bigger trays but I like to sow into the smaller ones because I'm growing quite a lot and that way I can make sure there's good germination. If you find your seeds germinate and um, you have like one spot, you can just put another seed into that empty cell because it will grow really quickly and catch up. So um, my compost is fairly moist, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put each of these trays into um, one of these black trays full of water and bottom water it, that's what I call it. So it will um, absorb the water through capillary action and then I'll drain it and then I'll take it through to my storeroom where I've got grow lights and heat mats and I'll put them on the heat mats with a dome over the top to keep the humidity in and I put them on the heat mats under lights until they germinate. As soon as they germinate, I'll take the lids off and I'll take them off the heat mats and then I'll grow them on under the lights. Um, once they get taller and too tall for my grow room, I will move them out to my zippy greenhouses or my cold frames, depending on what the weather's like. And then these will be ready to plant out as soon as my last frost has passed which is sort of the beginning of May, but I'll judge it on the weather forecast and how we're doing in a month's time. So let me show you what I'm sewing today. I'm gonna to pop a picture up on the screen so that you can see what they look like. Some of these varieties I've never sewn before and I am looking forward to seeing how they perform. So first of all, we have the whites and I'm sewing the fluffy double click snow puff. The double clicks are all sort of multi-petaled and gorgeous. So I'm sewing cupcakes white which um, the cupcakes sort of do produce like a flower that is more cup shaped and it's really pretty and quite pure. And then I'm sewing another white one called Purity, which is, I suppose what you'd call like the ordinary looking um, Cosmos. I mean, there's nothing too ordinary about Cosmos, they're gorgeous, but that's a lovely white one. Then I'm sewing um, a Cosmos that I sew every year called Dazzler and and it's really gorgeous and it really stands out at that time of year and it's got this lovely yellow centre so I love Dazzler. I'm sewing double click cranberries so again the double click have got multi petals and it's sort of they're more fluffy. I'm, so I'm sewing Versailles, te, Versailles Tetra which is a similar colour maybe slightly lighter than um, the Dazzler that I really like but it's got a sort of darker eye so around you know where the yellow center is it gets a bit darker whereas Daz is just one color all over. I'm sewing rose bonbon which I absolutely love it's just the perfect pink fluffiness. So then I've got a mix and the reason that I've chosen this mix is because it's a dwarf cosmos so it's really good for like patio pots or if you've got an area at the front of the border that you would like some cosmos on because they only grow to 60 centimeters tall. So they're about half the height of a normal cosmos. So you're just going to get a different um, level of display, which I think will be really good. And I definitely want some for my pots. 
So I've got the Cosmos Gazebo Mix. And then I've got three new varieties to me that I've never seen before. One of them is called Cosmos Bipenitus Daydream. And it is the softest, palest pink. It's kind of a pinky white. And then it's got um, a pink center around the yellow eye. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what that's like. So the next one I'm sewing is called Cosmos Bipenitus Gloria. And um, this is a lovely pink color with a darker center. Looking forward to that. And then the last one I'm sewing is a bit of a departure for me because um, I would not normally choose this color. And this one is called Cosmos Sulfurous Red Crest and it's orange. And it's not like a tangerine orange. It seems to be like a darker orange from what I've seen on the pictures. I have not grown it before. And I'm hoping it's going to go really well with some of my dahlias that have got the orangey hue to them. So um, yeah, really looking forward to that. Let's see how that does. Okay, so now to sew my Cosmos. So I'm doing two rows of the Gloria and I'll just show you what one of them looks like and then I'll just do the rest because they're all very similar. So this is a Cosmos seed and you'll see they're long and pokey and it's very easy to sew these. So you just take one and literally I poke it in the soil and then press it in. I'm not pressing hard and I'm only putting one in each. As I said earlier, if you find one of your cells doesn't germinate, just come along and pop another one in because it will germinate you know, they germinate really fast, so it will catch up in no time. I'm literally just taking one seed, poking it in. So I do find that when you grow Cosmos, they do self-seed quite a lot, which is fantastic if you want to, you know, keep growing them every year. If you, if you find varieties that you like, you'll find little seedlings shoot up when it gets warmer. And um, you can just transplant those to where you want them. I never rely on that though, I always re-sow my own every year. So everything's sewn now. You may have seen me sewing more than one in some of the cells and I know that I've mentioned this before in my previous videos but if you haven't seen those then the reason I sew more than one in a cell would be because my seed packet has um, says that it's old. So with new seeds I'll just put one in each cell but with older packets I'll double up or triple up if they're very old um, just because I want to make sure that something germinates and your the germination rate will deplete over the years. So if you've had your seeds for like five years, you may get a very low germination rate. I think with Cosmos, um, actually they seem to last quite long. Um, so you should be all right. Uh, anyway, so once, because these cells are very small and Cosmos are kind of needy, um, once they've germinated, if I get more than one in each cell, then I will thin them. Like I'll just take it out or pot it on. Um, anyway, I'm going to water these now by filling the tray with water, then I'll drain them and take them through to the grow room. So all the Cosmos are sewn, they're on the heat mats, under the grow lights, with their domes on to keep the humidity in. I will take the domes off and turn the heat mats off once 90% of them have germinated. If I see some cells that are empty, I'll put another seed in if I've got any seeds left in the packet because I finished some of them today. And um, that's about it. Once uh, we've had our last frosts, I will plant them out in the flower beds and hopefully have a wonderful display. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you all next time. Or it actually just grows too tall to be able to protect it from the frost because unless you've got like a massive greenhouse, well, it doesn't be massive. <laughs> so.